Following Brave Girl's success in 2021, many fans thought that the fate of the group had changed for the better. But with Brave Entertainment announcing that the group has officially disbanded in February 2023, people started wondering how the company had failed to keep the group as successful. Brave Entertainment had a long history of mistreating and ignoring Brave Girls in favor of other groups. The group debuted in April of 2011 under Brave Entertainment with a completely different lineup than the one that we're used to seeing today. The two releases in their debut year weren't big hits, but they still did relatively well for a group that didn't come from a big label. So you can see that the group had potential even in the beginning, seeing as their next comebacks were well received and they continued to gain fans rapidly. However, the company failed them even then. If you've been a K-pop stan for a while, you probably know that Brave Brothers, the person that founded Brave Entertainment, is behind some of the best songs to have come out of the second generation. He produced songs for After School, Sista, 4 Minute, Big Bang, and many more, but mainly AOA. Because he was too busy producing for other groups, Brave Girls went on hiatus for an indefinite amount of time. They had little to no promotions for a good chunk of 2012 and only released a single in 2013, which didn't have a music video or any promotions. Fans were confused at this point. With Brave Brothers not giving his own group any attention or activities, people thought that he had given up on Brave Girls altogether. Some even thought that Brave Girls had disbanded, but since the company wasn't giving an answer or a clear statement, everyone was left in the dark. Brave Girls was reportedly supposed to release their first full album sometime in 2014, but that never ended up happening because Brave Brothers was producing other group songs, which led to the members leaving. Soa, Unyong, and Yejin departed from the group, and Brave Girls only had two members, Hedan and Yujin. The group didn't have any music-related activities until 2016, when five members were added to the lineup. They released the single Deep End in February of 2016. The fact that they had lost members and had a long hiatus made them lose their momentum. No matter how how good the music they were releasing was, the three years of inactivity had really hurt the group and had destroyed any chance of popularity that they might have had. Or so they thought. A few months later, they dropped High Heels and a digital single in September, making 2016 the most active year of their career. Then, a year later, their lineup experienced more changes, with the two remaining original members leaving. In March of the same year is when they released Roll In, but back then, it was only a sleeper hit, which was mostly acknowledged by international fans and became popular among soldiers. Hyun, one of the members, also ended up leaving in 2018, and Brave Girls went into another two-year hiatus. During the hiatus, they ended up having lots of performances in the military, and Unji even ended up appearing on the first season of Queendom. They ended up releasing another single in 2020 titled We Ride, which fit right in with the retro trend at the time, but the comeback didn't do well. This seemed like the end of Brave Girls based on what the members were saying themselves. In April of 2021, they had a meeting regarding their disbandment, and two of the the members, Yuna and Yudong, ended up moving out of their dorms, thinking that their time in the group had come to an end. Then a miracle happened. The group had performed for soldiers more than 100 times from 2016 and onwards. All the performances of the song had been compiled in a video and uploaded by a channel called Vidator, along with comments of soldiers who had seen them perform. They had uploaded hundreds of videos that were similar, but this one in particular got tons of attention. Even though they were going viral, the group didn't get excited at first. Yujong revealed that the members told each other, don't get your hopes up, you'll end up feeling hurt. Their success was unimaginable. They got back on music shows and got several trophies, set the record for the most perfect all kills, peaked at number one on every Korean chart, and the members got busy with activities. They all expressed to be very grateful that they were doing what they love. Fans and non-fans were so happy to see the girls thrive and to finally see their hard work pay off. Now, it was all in the hands of Brave Entertainment to make the most of the group's sudden success. With a song that was breaking record after record and was putting Brave Girls on the ranks of groups like BTS, Blackpink, and TWICE, it shouldn't have been too hard to keep them popular. Yet, they failed. It's true that sometimes it's hard to capitalize on viral success, even if groups have the best management. In cases like these, companies usually try to recreate that success by following the same recipe that made them go viral in the first place. However, we can't exactly call Brave Girls a one-hit wonder. As mentioned before, even though their songs weren't exactly hits, they still did well in the charts, so it wouldn't have been too difficult for Brave Entertainment to continue basking on their popularity. But it was obvious that the company should have seized the opportunity and should have done it quickly since the industry was moving at an incredibly fast pace. After their newfound success, Brave Girls released a special version of High Heels and a promotional single titled Red Sun. They made their first official comeback with their fifth mini album, Summer Queen, with the lead single, Tima Bara. The song did very well on the charts, and although they weren't able to recreate the success of Roll In, it showed that the girls still had the general public's love. Then they released the repackaged version of their fifth 
mini album After We Ride with the lead single of the same name. However, the company let the fans know of the album two weeks before it got released, and when it came out, the song didn't have any music show promotions and only had a neighbor live performance. The album only had one version too, which didn't help much with the sales. They also released the mini album Thank You to celebrate the anniversary of their first win, but again, the marketing for the album in the title track was bad, and there was only one version of it. Well, it was kind of hard for Brave Brothers to spend the money Brave Girls had brought to the company to promote the group when he had spent it to build up a new building for Brave Entertainment. Brave Girls were also participants in Queendom Season 2, but ended up in the last place despite having amazing performances throughout the show. After Queendom, it seems that Brave Entertainment completely forgot that Brave Girls needed to be promoted in Korea too. They were the only group that participated in Queendom that didn't have a proper comeback after the show ended to gauge popularity gains. Whistle, the song they released in the last round of the show, also wasn't released nor promoted as an actual song. The group did do a US tour, which went relatively well, but the company promoted it really poorly. There was no merch for the tour, which made the fans come up with the merch themselves, and after the tour was over, they didn't release anything to keep their new fans interested. The members also expressed that they wanted to hold a concert for their Korean fans. They were supposed to hold a concert in January of 2022, but it was postponed indefinitely due to COVID. The girls went and did their US tour, but there still wasn't any news on what was going on with their Korean concert. The fans held protests in front of Brave Entertainment, but failed to get an answer from the company. Min Young then posted a message on Kakao Talk saying that the members desperately wanted to hold a concert in Korea. Due to the company denying this request, they said that they were willing to hold a concert in a small venue and even wanted to pay for it themselves, but the company didn't let them. They also expected to have a comeback during summer, but the company let them down in that department too. After the tour finished, they had no official offline schedules. Throughout all of 2022, they didn't hold a single fan meeting, birthday event, or anything similar. The only official communication that the group had with their fans this year was through a New Year greeting. Brave Girls faded into obscurity, with people forgetting about them altogether when new, more exciting groups started popping up and with the girls having no promotions whatsoever. So when it was announced that they disbanded and the girls had decided not to renew their contracts with Brave Entertainment, it came as a surprise to no one. Brave Girls had tried their best throughout their career, had a successful era that felt like a fever dream even to the members, and then were failed by their company, even though they had the desire and will to keep performing and releasing music for anyone who was willing to listen. So what's next for them? Well, let's just say that Brave Girls fans shouldn't give up hope just yet, as the members seem determined to keep on going with or without Brave Entertainment. On February 16th, Min Young told fans, We are not disbanding. The four members are willing to be together. The contract with the label just expired and we are still the same. She continued to assure fans that it is more than possible for the group to reunite in the future, saying that the members believe that this is not the end. She also asked for the fans to keep supporting them. Based on what Min Young wrote, it is possible that Brave Girls is going to continue as a group under the management of a new company who will finally treat them right. What's sure is that we will keep supporting them no matter what happens to them in the future. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!